So you want to make an Inquisitor and retinue? Well, thanks to our recent poll on the Astartes Anonymous Discord, our beloved patrons have voted for this to be today's video. And if you're hoping for the video to be How to Make Renegade Space Marines, don't worry. That'll be our next entry in our Make Your Own series. And so with that out of the way, let's talk about homebrewing your own Inquisitor and retinue. Whether it's for a kitbash kill team, or a single kitbash model to go alongside your Warhammer 40k army, or simply just for the enjoyment of creating your own lore, making an Inquisitor and the Acolyte is a really great way to delve into the very heart of the 41st millennium. With books like the Eisenhorn series giving some of the absolute best depictions of not just Inquisitors, but the actual feeling as a whole for humanity in the grim darkness of the far future. Now, there are tons and tons of ways to go about creating an Inquisitor. However, before I break this up into a few sections, I have to recommend looking at Wrath and Glory. It's one of a handful of D&D style role-playing games set in the 40k universe, with an immense variety of selections to choose from in regards to character creation. And as you might expect, if you choose to play Wrath and Glory as an Inquisitor, you can find plenty of helpful tools there to flush out a character's story, motivation, and abilities. This isn't sponsored or anything, I myself just had a really good time creating a couple of characters for Wrath and Glory. There's also Dark Heresy, and of course the 2001 Inquisitor game, though I won't be going into detail about those two simply because I don't really know enough about them. Now, we're going to break this video up into four easy sections. The Ordo, the Inquisitor, the Retinue, and the Allies. Now for the Ordo, there's lots to think about when including minor Ordos like we're going to, but we're going to start with the three major Ordos of the Inquisition. The Ordo Malleus, the Ordo Hereticus, and the Ordo Xenos. Starting with the Ordo Malleus, aka the Demon Hunters, who specialize in matters related to demonic incursions. Whether it be the prevention of said incursions, or the wholesale destruction of demons present in real space, and of course, the intricate and often perilous investigations into these two things. The Ordo Malleus has the honor of being the oldest Ordo, and with that they have the most power of any Ordo, being led by 169 Inquisitor Lords who run the show. And you could, if you felt brave enough, have your homebrew Inquisitor be one of these 169, though it's treacherous waters to homebrew a character that can have such a massive impact on the setting, so if you do choose to, remember to be careful and tread lightly whilst also respecting the established law. One of the best things about having your homebrewed Inquisitor be a part of the Ordo Malleus is the requisitioning of their chamber militant, the Grey Knights. Having access to likely the most powerful chapter of Space Marines to assist in your purposes allows you to create a much more grandiose narrative that can take place on a larger stage. Now next up is the Ordo Hereticus, aka the Witch Hunters. Now generally speaking, the Ordo Hereticus has some crossover with the Ordo Malleus, as they both ultimately are anti chaos forces. However, whilst the Order Malleus primarily deals with the scuppering of chaos demons and chaos space marines, the Order Hereticus more commonly handles internal threats of chaos. Not to say that the Order Malleus doesn't do that, it's just that the odds are if you find an Inquisitor knocking on your door because little Bobby upstairs is speaking in tongues, odds are that an Inquisitor of the Order Hereticus will be the one knocking on your door ready to blow a hole through Bobby's frontal lobe before he comes downstairs and does the same to the rest of your family and your neighbours. You see, whilst every single Order of the Inquisition houses the most supremely paranoid individuals within the Imperium, the Order Hereticus has the distinct honor of having the most paranoid individuals of any order, and much like the Order Malleus, possess a chamber militant, of which are the fan beloved Sisters of Battle, or Adeptus Sororitas. So if you favor nuns with guns, and you want them to be a part of your growing narrative, the Order Hereticus might be the one for you. And another lesser known ally specific to the Order Hereticus is that of the Frateris Militia, essentially a force of somewhat shoddily trained, overly religious men-at-arms bound to the Ecclesiarchy. And finally, for the last of the three major Ordos, we have to talk about the Ordo Xenos. Much like the Order Hereticus, the MO is in the name. This is the arm of the Inquisition that handles matters internal and external in relation to Xenos incursions. And whilst they will often have roles that relate to the stopping of massive Xenos invasions like that of the Orcs or Tyranids, the Ordo Xenos will more often handle things of a more subtle yet insidious nature. For example, the ever-growing genestealer cult menace priming worlds for Tyranid consumption, or maybe even the harboring of minor Xenos in hive cities, etc. And tracking as you might expect, the Ordo Xenos Inquisitors and their retinues get a small pass to utilize Xenos tech and weaponry, as not only can it be helpful in the undertaking of their assignments, but also because they're the best equipped individuals in the entire Imperium to understand the inner workings of said tech. And once again, as you might expect, they too have a chamber militant, that of the Death Watch chapter. And whilst the Death Watch don't have the raw numbers of the Sororitas or the psychic might of the Grey Knights, they are without a doubt the most versatile and adaptable force of Space Marines ever. Being comprised almost exclusively of veteran warriors from any and all other chapters, the Marines of the Death Watch form close-knit kill teams, as opposed to standard squads. Kill teams with a wide variety of skills, making them ideal to handle the many differing machinations of any and all Xenos. Now, with that out of the way, we've got to talk about minor Ordos. Not all of these are necessarily militaristic, but all of them do carry the weighty authority of the Inquisition to complete their tasks. And because there are so many of them, I'm going to do my best to quickfire them at you. Right, let's do this. You've got the Ordo Sicarius, formed to keep a watchful eye over the Officio Assassinorum after Goge Vandai's reign of madness. You've got the Ordo Sanctorum, formed to keep a watchful eye over the Ecclesiarchy. The Ordo Scriptus, who monitor 
greater Imperial records in history. The Ordo Astra, who charter the stars. The Ordo Astartes, who keep tabs on the many chapters of the Adeptus Astartes. The Ordo Excorum, who monitor and record all instances of Exterminatus. The Ordo Barbarus, that oversee pre-industrial planets. The Ordo Machinum, who keep tabs on the many different sub-factions and actions of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The Ordo Originatus, who hilariously try to uncover the origins of the Inquisition, who likely clash with the Ordo Redactus, whose singular purpose is to safeguard and erase actions undertaken by the Inquisition in the name of secrecy, and the Ordo Scriptorum, who oversee the many communications sent throughout the Imperium, the Ordo Aegis, who watch over the Cadian Gate, who are still in operation post-fall of Cadia, the Ordo Custodum, who cover all sorts of things but exclusively on Holy Terror, the Ordo Maledictum, who monitor the Great Rift slash Cicatrix Maledictum and hope to one day close the damn thing, the Ordo Kronos, who endeavour to understand time travel and safeguard the Emperor's will across the timeline, the Ordo Necros, who do God knows what. The Ordo Vigilus, who oversee the Ordo Necros doing God knows what. This isn't even a full list, there are many more that do things ranging from tiny, borderline, insignificant tasks in the Emperor's name, all the way to things that would lead their investigations across the galaxy. And the best part is, you can create your own minor Ordo too. Just as always, try your best to make sure it doesn't conflict with any of the established lore, and you're golden. You could create a minor Ordo that handles anything from small arms deliveries all the way to the conduct of black ships that sail across the stars collecting psychic souls for the Emperor's consumption. And this tracks quite comfortably into making the Inquisitor you're planning to homebrew. Now getting the obvious stuff out the way, your Inquisitor can be whatever kind of individual you want regardless of background. However, background should definitely play into it at least in a little way. Inquisitors, or interrogators as they are, are more often than not recruited from the different branches of the Administratum, Astra Militarum, and noble families of high resource worlds. It's unusual for an Inquisitor to come from some backwards hive world. However, it is possible. It's also common for Inquisitors to be Psychers, though the range of their psychic power varies, and as you might expect, humans that have psychic powers of gargantuan magnitude typically do not serve in the Inquisition, but rather are recruited for other roles, or just to be killed. I mean, you can have an Inquisitor that's a psychic powerhouse, but it may serve your narrative better if they don't have a deus ex machina of psychic abilities to solve every single problem they face. But as I was saying, you should definitely consider having your Inquisitor's origins be grounded in something a little more reasonable. Maybe think a little bit about the time when they were an interrogator for another Inquisitor before they themselves became a full fledged Inquisitor, and how that time and that master started to shape them as an individual. Was their master a metaphorical slave driver, constantly pushing their subordinates to do better or face death as punishment? Or perhaps their Inquisitor superior was a firm yet understanding individual? Did he or she know that after many cycles in rejuvenation treatments know that their life's work was coming to an end, and needed a competent successor to carry on their legacy? And ask yourself how your chosen order plays into this. Perhaps they only joined their master's retinue in the first place by being the last officer standing in a drawn out battle against a new and terrifying minor Xenos species, only to be saved by the Death Watch to be taken under an Inquisitor's wing for their expertise in battling that one particular species. Or maybe your character was an Administratum Scholar brought on because of their unmatched intellect and borderline psychopathic demeanour. And after you've fleshed out your Inquisitor's origins, have a think about how they conduct themselves whilst being in charge of a retinue. Are they much like their old master, brutal and unforgiving? Or are they a more kind Inquisitor, still happy to spend the lives of their retinue and hundreds of Imperial citizens out of necessity and purpose, but ultimately not wasteful or reckless with the lives under their command. And on that point, there's definitely something worth mentioning about pretty much all Inquisitors. Despite what I've just said, there are no kind Inquisitors. By their very nature, all Inquisitors are ruthless, cunning, and paranoid to differing degrees. The question you have to answer is just how ruthless, cunning, and paranoid are they, and how does their attitude reflect that? And on top of that, how do their personal values and chosen Ordo impact their personality and execution of their role? Are they an Inquisitor of the Ordo Xenos that over centuries of service has had their hatred of Xenos replaced with a form of a masochistic respect due to being lifelong adversaries? Or are they an Inquisitor of the Ordo Hereticus that has only become more hateful and vicious as they've gotten older towards the Imperial citizenry, only ever interacting with citizens when they've done something wrong, and has grown weary and resentful towards the mass population. Or perhaps they're a Lord Inquisitor of the Ordo Malleus, and after many hundreds of years of collaborations with the Grey Knights and requisitions from the Astra Militarum, has only the bare necessities of a retinue and acts more like a skirmishing military tactician, always thinking about the next battle, next chaos temple destroyed, the next demon vanquished. Consider having their experiences reflect not just their personality, but their appearance too. Again, an Inquisitor of the Ordo Malleus may find himself in a form of power 
armor, ready for conflict. Or an Inquisitor of the Ordo Xenos may find herself equipped with several bionic augmentations, keeping her going after many decades or centuries of close encounters with Tyranids and Gene Stealers. Are they young by Inquisitor standards, just barely starting to understand how to properly utilize their retinue or chamber militant? Or perhaps they're an older Inquisitor, an individual of singular purpose and thought, going through the motions day by day, killing flagrantly and condemning without a second thought. Really try to find the soul of your Inquisitor and start to build outwards. And once you've done so, it'll be time to have a think about your Inquisitor's retinue. Now, for me, as a rampant kit basher, this is often my favorite part of this process. In my opinion, there are ultimately two approaches to creating an Inquisitor's retinue, and you can follow one or both of them. I like to call them function and fashion with function being the inclusion of retinue acolytes that serve an explicit purpose towards your Inquisitor's ends. This will be things like interrogators, astropaths, scribes, tech adepts, etc. And fashion being the inclusion of retinue acolytes that are most of the time unnecessary, but still make for really fun characters to write about and model if you're into modeling. This will be things like rogue xenos, militarum veterans, or the inclusion of a space marine. Whilst ultimately these things can have a narrative place in your retinue, the majority of the time it'll be kind of unnecessary. But don't be deterred. Like with all our videos in the Make Your Own series, I would certainly promote having fun first and foremost. And to be fair, one of the greatest defining characteristics of pretty much all Inquisitors is their autonomy. And this applies to their retinue and who they choose to be in their retinue too. So go wild. Anyways, let's do some more quick firing to get those ideas flowing. Interrogators and high interrogators, ultimately your Inquisitors' protégés and eventual successors. These guys are ostensibly Inquisitors in training and will be your Inquisitors' most valuable acolytes. Tech adepts and tech priests, your Inquisitors on-hand tech masters, the individual who will keep things going when the shit hits the fan. Whether it be opening a giant blast door when gene stealers are only seconds away from destroying your retinue, or getting a giant cannon working so your ragtag team can punch a hole in something that is in dire need of a hole. Astropaths. It can only be helpful when one of your party can look into the warp and discern clues to your ultimate objective. Scribes. Keeping the long history of your Inquisitor's accolades, achievements, and plans. Geogans. Can't go anywhere without a qualified medic, being a militarum-trained battlefield medic, or a hospitaler of the Sisters of Battle, like the next one, a Sister of Battle. Considerably more likely in the Order Hereticus, ranging from faithful preachers to individuals who will outmuscle most of your party, a Sister of Battle is a powerful, strong, quick-thinking addition to a retinue with a staunch faith that will find them being one of the most reliable party members at your Inquisitor's disposal. Sanctioned Psychers. Can't hurt to have a Psyker on board that can turn foes of your Inquisitor into puddles of wet meat and ash. Well, it can't hurt until they inevitably get possessed, I suppose. Militarum veterans. Not just a walking gun. These guys are packed full of personality and will make for excellent narrative tools when creating your retinue and your retinue's stories and adventures. Inquisitorial henchmen. Dime a dozen guns in service to the Inquisition. Whilst they may not add lots in terms of narrative value, they make up for it by becoming exceptional meat shields. Assassins. Be it one of the many assassins of the Assassinorum on loan to your Inquisitor or a full-time ex-guard sniper that's never missed a shot, having some kind of a assassin on board can be quite the offensive or defensive tool. Crute warriors. Nothing like a little bit of crute savagery to help a retinue of the Ordo Xenos, much like Eldari combatants. Whilst the majority of the Imperium's military armors would kill one of these on sight, a charismatic Inquisitor can sometimes convince a lone Eldari that their interests are aligned. Tau Firecast. There could be any number of reasons for having a Tau as part of your retinue, whether for their innate understanding of Tau culture or just their sharpshooting prowess. A Space Marine. A Black Shield Renegade Space Marine, or a warrior fulfilling the oath of a chapter, there are dozens of reasons to have one of the Imperium of Man's walking weapons be a part of your Inquisitor's retinue. Though, be careful, he may flatten your Tau Sharpshooter if the two are left unattended. Ogrens, the biggest, well-meaning, lovable bastards in the entire Imperium. Whilst they may be difficult to hold an articulate conversation with, no one's going to complain about Big Bob's ability to talk when he's throwing a rock at Mark 7 towards the nearest Chaos Cultist Cranium. Demon Hosts. Whilst uncommon, even amongst the retinues of the Order Hereticus and Order Malleus, none can deny the utility of being able to bind a demon within a less than willing participant for whatever purposes your Inquisitor has in mind. Jacaro. Even rarer, these little mega mind orangutans, greatly sought after by all Inquisitors who know of them. A Jacaro's motives will often be totally unintelligible, but having one of these aboard your vessel ready to turn a ring on your finger into a miniature lethal laser weapon can be a massive boon. These twisted little chimps will create or modify technological marvels at a whim. 
And despite their less than kissable appearance and inability to speak in any real capacity, they are still powerhouses to add to any retinue. Cherubs, servitors, and servo skulls. No good retinue is complete without some lobotomized criminal carrying around your bolter or a multi-melter. Priests and preachers, these overwhelmingly charismatic holy men are a must for any hereticus or malleus retinue. Rogue traders. The galaxy is simply a sandbox to these free-thinking chaps. Never a dull moment around an individual who may randomly have a helpful anecdote on how to worm your way out of or into a sticky situation. Crusaders. Power-armored men and women trained to kill by the administrator and wielding power swords and storm shields. A crusader or two will act as both a staunch defender to their inquisitor as well as a deadly executor as well. The truth is that you can have a retinue comprised of just about anything, way more than I've listed here, but as mentioned before, try your best to have a mix of fashion and function. Ultimately, your chosen Ordo and Inquisitor's personality will have a lot to say in what retinue members may be appropriate. And do take into account how well these members will interact with each other when the chips are down. A veteran space marine may happily curb stomp a Xenos within your retinue if they are that way inclined. And a preacher or priest may well be very upset at the notion of your Inquisitor hauling around a demon host. Though that being said, you can actually pick conflicting retinue members if you've got a hilarity ensuing plan for your narrative. Oh, and by the way, once in a blue moon, very rarely a retinue will have an orc. Don't ask me how it works, I just know it's happened. They'll be about as easy to control as a rabid pit bull in a preschool, but if your Inquisitor needs something crumped, there's not many better ways to make it happen than an orc. And remember, after all this, each member of your retinue can be fleshed out just as much as your Inquisitor. These characters are yours to do with as you please. Whether they're someone you've loved writing about and decided that your Inquisitor needs them to be alive for as long as possible, or if you've intentionally created a gag character to be killed off at the first opportunity, you can ultimately do whatever you want with them. Now let's quickly talk about allies. Of course, as mentioned before, the Ordo Malleus gets the Grey Knights, the Ordo Hereticus gets the Sisters of Battle, and the Ordo Xenos gets the Death Watch. But major or minor Ordo, you're not just restricted to their chamber militant. Inquisitors hold absolute total authority. Rallying companies of guardsmen is a relatively straightforward matter most of the time if one can be justifiably taken from their current duty. Space Marines too. Though a Space Marine chapter does have the power to decline at their own risk. Truthfully, I think as far as allies go, the only thing out of reach for the Inquisition or an Inquisitor would be that of the Adeptus Custodes. Whilst the Golden Warriors don't always have the power to order around other Imperial bodies, they don't have to take orders from them either. And that includes the Inquisition. And unlike the forces of the Adeptus Astartes, there's no threat an Inquisitor can level against the Adeptus Custodes that wouldn't result in anything other than that Inquisitor being turned inside out. That being said, have a think about how allied forces would be useful not to your Inquisitor or retinue, but to the narrative you're creating around them. We mentioned in our Make Your Own Loyalist Space Marine video that it's not insane to think that a Space Marine chapter could be founded with an Inquisitorial Ordo in mind as their chamber militant. You just need to make sure the Ordo's objectives require constant militaristic aid, and that it does not conflict with anything already established. For example, if you wanted to make an Ordo that specifically hunted demons of Slanesh in a particular subsection of space, that would still fall within the purview of the Ordo Malleus. So have a really good think about something unique and plausible if you're determined to create a Space Marine chapter as your minor Ordo chamber militant. Anyways, if you're enjoying our content, be it the podcast, these videos, or the shorts, I'd really appreciate it if you took a quick look at our patron. Link down below. And thank you again for watching. We hope you enjoyed. We are still taking entries into our upcoming homebrew review series. And of course, that extends to more than just space marines. So if you've got a homebrew of any kind that you like the sound of us doing a dramatic reading for, followed by a brief discussion about what we like as well as what we may have done differently, please do feel free to jump in our Discord and submit it. And once again, thanks so, so much to our blessed patrons. Oxy Oxy, Nick Lass, Rion, Barbon, Black Hall, Bobby Coolpop, The Croc Enthusiast, The Gaming Storyteller, Jury Rigged Hobbies, Voxcaster Nowhere, Jordan, Ollie Wally, Fane Horrigan, Johannes, and Josh. Thank you all so, so much. You are all the beating heart of this channel. Thank you so much. Anyways, take it easy, everyone. We'll see you next time.